Hello, everyone. Rochelle here. Uh, today, I'm going to be interviewing Christine Elson of Elson Studio. She is a trained architect and has worked with museums, galleries, and other cultural institutions for over the last 10 years, developing engaging um, exhibitions, installations, and activations. Today, she's going to talk to me about her digital exhibition, Conflated Views, which is currently online at DesignTO. Yeah, I guess to start, you know, can you just tell me a little bit about your background? Sure. Um, so first thing is I just, I'm not used to being interviewed or anything. So oh, okay. We can just yeah, discussion. Is, yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm a little. No worries. <laughs> um, okay. So I actually, so I have a master's of architecture. So I went to U of T before it was called Daniels. Um, and I got my master's of architecture there. Mm -hmm. And prior to that, I had worked in film for two years, like designing sets and things. Although film is a little bit of a euphemism. It was like cheap mu music videos and a few commercials, but while well, that was still like possible. And, uh, but my undergrad was in English literature. So- The diverse there, background, yeah. Yeah, so, but, so what happened to me was that uh like working at a proper architecture firm something was just like missing and it took a while and a bit of like a walkabout and everything but when i landed on designing for exhibitions and being able to do this like narrative spatial design where like a storyline is super is like the brief mm -hmm. then that became like like i found it I found oh, it okay. basically. So for I would say about the past decade or so, that's what I've been really focusing on. And um, I worked for a year in the um, the design department of the Royal Ontario Museum. So that was like a really good experience. And then since then, I've effectively had my own small practice doing designing exhibitions for museums and cultural institutions, and. Uh, yeah, I've been really break there for a second. Mm. You're back. Yeah, okay, but it's fine. Um, but um, with the kind of thing has, oh, I don't normally have such a bad connection yeah. running. Let me see if it's there. Okay, let's try that. Um, so I guess with the, so that, I mean, okay, so that's my background. Yeah, beautiful. And, <laughs> you know, and because of COVID has, how has that affected your practice and how you right. so, work, and work with people? Okay, so, um, it's interesting because on the one hand, I had always been working remotely with people prior. Right. So I have been based in Toronto and then now I'm based in Hamilton. And oh, I me too. Oh, really? Yes. Where are you? I'm on the mountain, like near Lime Ridge Mall. Oh, no way. Okay. Yeah. So we just moved here um, like three years ago. Okay. And like A transplant. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So my husband grew up on the mountain. Okay. So he grew up, he, he grew up at um, Upper Paradise and Mohawk. Okay. So the West End. Yeah. And then moved away and then came back and grew up um, on the mountain in Dundas. Right. Mm -hmm. And I just grew up in Toronto. So, but I'm, I mean, like when I say that we were on transplant, it wasn't like we were like. Yeah, exactly. There was some, some roots already here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we have like his, uh his family is still here they're just they're like i guess it's flambro but but yeah, yeah yes. we're um we're in kirk kirkendall Where's so we're, we're downtown yeah. in the city and so you know how there's like there's the area where it's like mcmaster yes like hamilton but we're like the most west of downtown okay gotcha so we're actually very close to where the um like the mcmaster innovation okay there is. yes like yes Longwood. yeah mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Well, 
when when all the pandemic's over, we should go for coffee and totally. like Lock Street or something. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. We're very close to uh, we're close to there. Yeah. Anyway, so have you been here for a long time, or I've I grew up here, and then I did, um, you know, for school I moved to Toronto, so I was there for a good chunk of time, and then there were a couple moments where for school I did a semester in Australia in Adelaide, oh, cool. and then for a couple years after I did my post grad, I lived in Milan for about two years. Oh wow! So I've been like always, like you always come back home. I find you know. I I know. It's weird because even though I'm not home, like the neighborhood I'm we're in now reminds me more of the neighborhood I grew up in. Right. In Toronto. Then the neighbor my mom still lives there. And where I live reminds me more of where she is when I was growing up <laughs> right. than where she is right now. Gotcha. Like it's become so like aspirational. Yes. It's a totally different vibe mm -hmm. so it's that that part is interesting oh so good yeah yeah but so did you can i just yeah so did you do a background in uh what did you go to school for so i my degree is in interior design so oh, okay. I, so i do have a background in 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 design did and you do, then go to ryerson for i that? went to ryerson yep okay. and then afterwards you know i i kind of puttered around and you know it's a weird thing about design because you like you love it so much, but then there's moments where like there, there's a little bit more than picking out pink colors and fabrics and stuff for clients, right? So then, I did a post grad at um, George Brown in um, IWB, so I did the interdisciplinary oh. design strategy because I thought, okay, yeah. if I can design spaces and products, I should be able to go bigger, right? Design systems and yeah, yeah, yeah. And that so that was a good. Um, that was did a good you, leap for me. Did you work with Christina Lujanovic there? She was a, one of the teachers. She, she was after me. So, okay. yeah. So I finished 2010-2011. Uh, so that put me okay, on a new right. path in terms of, you know, design strategies, strategic thinking, and that type of, like, you know, design as a process as opposed to, like, a product or a finished, you know, thing. Yeah, yeah. And then... Um, Mm -hmm. And then the IWB opened up to do a master's in inter interdisciplinary design strategy. So mm -hmm. a couple of years ago, I, I got that master's and they they, they partner with um, IADT in Dunleary. So in Ireland. So like we were able oh. to go there and do some sessions, like to get our master's and do it all remotely. And oh, then where is that in Ireland? That's kind of. It's just by, it's just outside of Dublin. Huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they were they were able to be say that you know for those that did this program because you already have nine months. Mm -hmm. Technically, you don't need to do another you know two or three years. You can just do another year and get your master's in the in the craft because you already have that background. So I I took that opportunity, mm -hmm. and then I did my master's in um, architecture biennales because I just love them. Right, I just love that oh, whole, cool. you know the world yeah, yeah. and all that. So. Um, I looked at, cause I had, I just, I travel for design and architecture. So I had all of this research I didn't know in terms of like Venice, Chicago, yeah. Yeah. Oslo, Lisbon. Like I just had all this content and I was like, Anyways. Oh, yeah. yeah. So then I thought, you know, what is the future of this, um, of this format? Because it, mm -hmm. you know, it's, for me, it was like, it's too, it's too didactic. Like you're going through it and you just get con consumed like it's too much right you get fatigue. yeah mm -hmm. you get fatigue and then what's different in terms of the same format of like plans elevation models some sort of 3d model some sort of video right so it's like what's that new um what was the new format and because of the time constraint i couldn't get there but i mm -hmm. developed a um i should test this with you i developed um mm -hmm. a little framework and tool to get people to think um with a different lens so I, it's more like um i approach somebody i go okay so if you were to design the analy of ideas as an artist what comes to your mind and then they design da, da, da. and then i flip it i go okay because my my thinking was the artist in the future will be an educator so like flipping it so like now if you're an educator how do you design a biennale of ideas and they completely rethink their way of 
presenting material or how it should be seen. And then I'm like, okay, these are the glimpses of what the future could be for this, um, mm. for this format. So yeah. Yeah, I should bring that back. I totally forgot about my little, my little tool. <laughs> you know what though? It's so interesting because our interests are so aligned. Because mm -hmm. I, um, I remember even a long time ago, I applied to, and this is like really minuscule, but I applied to be considered for the Prix de Rome. So wow. what happened? Well, but what happened when you're in architecture school in your final year, each school nominates one person to go forward. And then that, the, the choice is picked from that. So you first you have to pass your school's test. And so I, I didn't, my friend got it instead. So he was put forward. But my proposal was about was going to be about like world fairs and mm -hmm. alleys and stuff and the kind of it was too big of an idea but it was about the the relationship of like first of all you have this kind of conglomeration of ideas and then it's also really interesting how in world fairs like then the space upon which this structure was built ends up either becoming something like successful in the fabric of the city later Mm -hmm. or is like left to ruin yes and there's like this weird tension between like oh it's a great place of ideas but then not thinking of it in the future as being mm -hmm. like a space and so yeah no totally like fair i am very interested in all mm -hmm. of that and then i think the the one thing that i was learning when i was doing some of my research is that you know the architecture being alleys for architects period you cannot be an, a designer that practices in the field you can't be an urban planner that who mm -hmm. has ideas like it was very you know mm -hmm. one-dimensional I was like oh then it just needs to be just essentially broken up a little bit bigger right so there could be more people to have ideas in terms of what the future could be for the practice or anything so it was interesting hearing these little layers of people being like I would love to you know, yeah. go but I can't or people that, that do get in they're just like I don't know how you get chosen or Mm. all these different things so it's been it's it'll be interesting for the venice one because they put it on hold and then it's back mm -hmm. again in may if people are actually willing to go there and, mm -hmm. and see, or or if people are going to adapt and try and do things online like it's it's an interesting spot for our for our industry because like people have to adapt because people just cannot go into immersive spaces but how do you create you know mm -hmm new spaces that can be experienced digitally that's a little bit different from how you would experience it mm -hmm. in real life that is a good segue into my yeah, exhibition. exactly <laughs> <laughs> because this has been like a super challenge mm -hmm. um but before that i actually was i actually um in the 2008 biennale in venice i was an assistant to an artist slash architect who is being like who was in the Arsenale. So he mm -hmm. was in the graded exhibition. So I was actually there like installing and stuff and got to be like behind the scenes at the Biennale. Um, but that was the year that it was beyond building. And okay. So they, they opened it up to like more, but that particular Biennale got super criticized by the architects as not being serious enough. Right. <laughs> you I can't think architects yeah. are a weird. Yes. They're like a very insular hyper intellectual but like it doesn't seem to translate outside of that yes. world <laughs> so true yeah yeah i just did was that philip beasley because i just interviewed no 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 ante lu so okay. it was like um yeah it was his cloud project okay okay cool no because i i just finished interviewing philip beasley because he has a exhibition out in cambridge Mm. So he has a new one and his whole philosophy is like, you know, the architecture has been so much about wall building, right? Mm -hmm. Like keep things mm -hmm. out, don't like create a nice object that can be protected. And he's like, it's not the future. He's like, the future is creating spaces that breathe and interact with each other. Like that's how you create resilient structures is that it's mm -hmm. constantly talking to each other. It's not mm -hmm. um, the art of just wall building and hoping that that is the way to go so mm -hmm. oh yes so there are uh, views out there i just have to find them i gotta find those little have you seen the work of philip rom mm -mm. philip rom, okay take a look at him because he um it, for him like he thinks of space in terms of like the atmosphere 
Ooh, okay. And so it's like his diagrams are actually like heat maps. And it's oh, kind okay. of like, yeah, it's very, that's very interesting. He was, yeah. Actually, he was in that 2008. Um, and it was very funny because his installation was basically this sort of like sleek platform with like that kind of 2008 angle. <laughs> And it was warm and it had a, basically a bunch of like naked Italians, like <laughs> with like, and they were give out chili peppers. That's amazing. And peppermint. And it was like to acclimatize by eating the chili, you warm up and you right. would acclimatize. And by eating the peppermint, you cool down. And it was cool. That's cool. But yeah. also like kind of like mostly overshadowed by the naked Italians. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> You got to get people into your exhibition somehow. <laughs> but yeah, so like, let's talk about your, your, okay. new, yeah. Well, I will be a little more like, I'll just be like a little more like me. So, yeah. So on the one hand, I was totally used to working remotely because mm -hmm. of being in Hamilton or Toronto and like working with people in Chicago or Detroit. And, and actually it was ironic because when we moved to Toronto, no, when we moved from Toronto to Hamilton, I started getting more Toronto clients. Nice. And I had to like drive in for meetings and I was like, oh, like, why can't we just do it? And of course it was like still on Skype. Right. So, yeah, well, which reminds me, my website has like my Skype address and I was like, oh no, I might as well have my like Hotmail address <laughs> up there. Like it's, I have to remember to update that. Like, get rid of the Skype handle. But, um, yeah, so, so that part was like not a big deal. And I had one uh, project that they were like, we still want to do it with you, but basically all new work decimated. Really? Yeah. Well, I mean, no one is like making mm. exhibitions and no one had the budget and I'm like a, an add-on. Okay. So that, um, so, okay. So that basically gave me more time. Mm. And when the call for design TO came up, I thought, you know what, like, it's time to start thinking about your practice. Yes. Like taking a step back and trying to frame it and just like look at it a little bit. Um, but I was also really nervous and like afraid. <laughs> so I, I, I sent in a proposal with, um, like I did the thing where it's like you ask a partnering institution okay. mm -hmm. venue. So I did that one and I ch specifically chose the venue that's the furthest away from downtown in the smallest hallway. <laughs> so the Artscape Weston. Okay. Like, yeah. So, I mean, Artscape Weston opened in like March, 2020. So they're like, nobody yeah. knows about them. Right. And I was just like, you know what, but this is just me doing a baby step and I'll just do this thing. And, and so I um, proposed that I would actually just like do these 2D drawings of which I had done one of a year ago because of having a bit of spare time. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, I'm, I'll revisit my past projects and do these 2D collages of them. And the idea is um, that within like the design world, there is something in the way exhibitions are represented that is kind of unique because what we do is we draw a plan and then we conflate the elevations onto it. Okay. So that, so that when you look at the plan, you see that the art that is displayed like on the plan. Right. But the art, it's actually like displayed like this on the plan and really it goes like this on the wall. And yes. where yeah. it's sort of interesting so I was like, well, so that's kind of interesting. That's something we just do. Yes. And then I don't think anyone knows about our little niche world. And yeah, I don't, I never knew that either. I thought yeah. you just have like elevations or whatever. Huh. Yeah, no, it's the way, cause, cause actually one thing that's interesting about it is that the scale of like a big work, for example, um, when you put it on the plan, it takes up space. Yes. But actually that is how much like psychological space that the work should take. You know what I mean? So yeah. because you don't view big works as closely as you do little works. So in a way, looking at it on the plan actually helps to like understand whether you have 
whether visitors have like a proper viewing distance and things. Right. Okay. So I was like, okay, I'll do like nine of those and I'll put them up in the wall at West, like at, on the, in this hallway. And then uh, of course I was like behind schedule and didn't like make the work on mm -hmm. top. And then um, Artscape sent me an email. They're like, okay, we canceled because, and that was in, um, that was like January 2nd. Oh, so recent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I but, thought maybe like in October they can't. No, 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 no. It was like in January. So then what happened oh. is that, but meanwhile, while I was doing that, I was like, you know what? The, before they canceled, I was still thinking like, oh, I, ha I need to come up with a way, like, like this is a good way for me to practice thinking about ways of making exhibitions online. Mm -hmm. and I did a lot of research into all of those like experiences where you can like physically be in the space and there's a few ready-mades out there and actually within the exhibition the two OCAD uses one ready-made which is like this kunst matrix okay where they make a 3d model and then you just click you you can move through it yourself but you also can click and just go from like image like work I to see. work and then the other one is using Matterport where you actually do the photo thing and you make like mm -hmm. the photo uh, it's like a okay, well maybe I should and then, but it involves having like made it in the real world okay. and then you document it through photographs and then it makes it into a 3D space. And you I see. Play. Okay. So that's the technology actually that like real estate agents will use for showing houses. Like right. you, you can like. Yep. Now I visualize it yeah. over here and then they, they yeah. zoom you into another place. Okay. And you can, it's like Google earth. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, um, but it was too within my time frame of like 21 days or whatever it was like too onerous to be able to do a good job um but like that's my 2.0 idea right. yeah so i actually had a meeting like with um robin wilcox who is like involved in the festival i don't know, know her title and I was just like, what should I, like, I have, to, like, how do we do this? And so she's actually the one who recommended this format. Okay. So I can start, why don't I share yeah. my screen and I can. Let's go through it. But I really, um, like, luckily, I mean, here's the, the problem here is that I had the work and actually making the three, like making the website I was kind of like, okay, then I'll just do the website. But <laughs> right. I didn't understand how much work was in the website. And luckily my collaborator is my husband. <laughs> and so luckily he like figured it out for me. But um, so what we did is we just came up with this thing where, so I have these six projects and then okay then and i have to I, I still have to like update a few things but we're going to change this to say explore 2 day explore 2d view 3d mm -hmm. but so this so to be honest even figuring out how to like embed this um viewer mm -hmm. was like a big learning curve but i've created this so this is this example of like plan and elevation yes. completed Although in this one, it's more traditional because the elevations are above. But, and here, what I've done actually is I've, sh in this exhibition, it's a permanent gallery, but there's um, like a component of rotations. So okay. every four months, they have to rotate out particularly sensitive materials because of like light exposure and stuff. And so what I've done is I've incorporated, this one actually had like eight rotations, but I incorporated four of them here so gotcha. it's like Japanese screens beautiful and then uh, yeah and then there's this tokenoma space that I that's been flattened out so uh, this is definitely for like a designer to understand but I was mm -hmm. also hoping that people would just find it interesting mm -hmm. so this tokenoma space this is actually the spring iteration this is the summer iteration this okay. is the winter, this is the fall, 
And so all of the artifacts change within. And then there's actually a big story about designing that. But, um, and then in this case here, the no uh, robes also rotated out. And there were more of them, but I... But so that's an example of like one of the 2D drawings. Mm -hmm. And then, um, and then for the fly through, basically this is what Robin suggested because she was like, okay, you know, you have this model because this is the model I use to design the exhibition and communicate with the client, right? the design team. And so I thought, so we thought it would be interesting to show what, to show the space 3D and 2D, mm -hmm. but then the weird layer is that you can explore like the, the 2D is interactive and not the 3D because the 3D is supposed to kind of show the effectively like how we were imagining that viewers right. would, like it's a curated view. And so, um, yeah. So I have four, no, six. So I have six of these. And then, uh, but I mean, here's another one where I did the flat. So this is Claude Cahoon. It was at the Ottawa Art Gallery. So for this one, we did, I did the 2D, uh, but with the actual objects within the space. Gotcha. To kind of understand that. And, uh, And then okay, back here. So are you working a lot with the curator and the collection to bring it to life? Like is that the Yeah. Yeah. So I have meetings with the curator. So this one was interesting because um the curator came to me, they had never worked with an exhibition designer at the okay. Art Gallery yet. And so the curator came to me and she had this amazing exhibition but like really no idea how to make it a 3D experience. And, uh, and she had these small little, I'll show it here. She had these, so Claude Cahoon and Marcel Moore are like this phenomenon. I don't know if you ever heard of them. Mm -mm. No, okay. They're, like somebody has got to make a movie about this. They are so crazy. There are these surrealist artists who were based in Paris, but like, um, but were also like a lesbian partners, but also stepsisters. I mean, it was wow. like, <laughs> it was intense. And they just did this small practice that they didn't really, uh, they just basically took these little photos of themselves. So Marcel Moore would take photos of Claude Cahoon dressed up and there was all these different, like playing with gender, all of this surrealist stuff. I guess this is as close as we can get to it. And these collages. And so, and they actually ended up being like resistance fighters on the island of Jersey during World War II. And they were like, yeah, and, uh, Claude Cahoon was like sent, they were was sentenced to be executed by the Nazis. And then the war was over beforehand. And I mean, it was, it, they're crazy. So anyways, the curator had selected a series of contemporary artists whose work aligned with Claude Cahoon okay. and Marcel Moore, whether or whether or not they actually, some of them intentionally and some of them not intentionally. And so the, so in a way, this exhibition has kind of conflated those two things, mm -hmm. these contemporary artists and the, the like, uh, the Genesis artists. And, but figuring out how to display these small photographs was a real issue because we didn't want them to get lost in the large scale works. Right. Of, and so what I propose is we have these like freestanding walls throughout the space, and then we would blow up and the walls happened to be like, we had to work with pre-existing conditions, et cetera, et cetera. And so what was interesting was that the size of the wall actually was similar in proportion to a five by seven photograph. Okay. So what we did is we, 
chose some key ones and blew them up. So when you enter the space, you were kind of immersed in the Claude Cahoon, Marcel Moore works. And then we left the small ones um, on the other side of the wall, but we let the artists choose which ones resonated with them the most. Mm -hmm. So it was literally a dialogue between the contemporary artist and I see. So there's like that kind of relationship going on. And then it makes more sense if this like could load properly. Oh, there we go. So this is where it stopped last time. <laughs> That's a bit unfortunate. Hmm. Okay. But if you go back here, you can see how I see. Okay. So, yeah. Is it a collaboration between you and the curator, curator to figure out the best way to like bring her, their vision to life? Yes. Right? Okay. Gotcha. And a hundred percent. And so, and often, um, curators, uh, like, like, okay, so this one, Gates of the Lord, this was an exhibition at the uh, Art Institute of Chicago. Mm -hmm. And this one I did a 2D with like, a kind of like made each room a mini perspective. Yeah, that's cool. And then flat in, so this is sort of like an interesting, um, with, and this is an example of showing how like the large works right. show that they take up this kind of space. So for example, this was a one where you're like, you have a, again, you're given like a preordained space within which okay. you can use and how it, it gets organized. Like often the curator just has no idea like where to start on that. So that's- really? okay. so, Okay. Yeah, no, I mean, they all have an idea of like groupings of works, right? But how to do it and also how to make it like an engaging exhibition. And in fact, this was one of the first ones I ever worked on um, as like an independent practitioner and my learning curve was pretty steep. And mm -hmm. so the curator had was thinking of it more in terms of how she would write a book about it. And so oh, that's what, an interesting approach. Yeah, yeah, because that's kind of her usual way of communicating is through writing with the images. And so there's a lot of smaller works. And so originally the exhibition was like kind of, you would circulate through a lot of the smaller works and then you kind of got payoff with the larger works. Mm -hmm. And I remember we first presented that and the director of the AIC at that time was like, you gotta seduce people. Like you need, yeah. so like you have to have to give them a reason to come in. Like this exhibition feels too much like a textbook. Right. So, so we kept on working and then i mean now hopefully i don't have textbook exhibitions but um yeah so, so it's really it's it's a true like collaboration but you're always thinking of the the viewer like what's the best way to tell the story so the viewer gets it yes yeah yeah and the viewer understands the story. Yes. Like, I mean, in this one, the main thing that I was allowed the, you know, it probably the, one of the main things I was allowed to do. So there were like two things. <laughs> it's like <laughs> creating these gates as like hmm. thresholds between one space and another was actually like, I had to really fight for that in a way because of like the budget and, Mm -hmm. something people won't really think that and then actually the fact that the colors were so many colors involved was actually a big really okay fight. yeah because um it was just it was outside of the comfort zone of the art institute they liked having one color right having yeah and now the new director apparently is even much more like likes everything white like that kind of so bringing in this and then actually this is kind of interesting in that the colors were incredibly culturally sensitive. Like we drew them from the work from India. Okay. So worked really closely. And even another thing that's kind of interesting, even like the hanging line. So every institution has 
a datum that they center the work on that's like their usual datum and uh we weren't really able we were able to bring that datum down a little bit because as the curator said she's like well in india you would never have things up this high this is for like tall westerners <laughs> right she's like in india like things are lower because we're like a smaller people so <laughs> like don't quote me on that but like yeah so even like those kinds of thought processes um and actually this is the one in all of my views this is the one uh view that I actually zoom in closely on a work because I was really inspired by this drawing. Okay. Because it was, and if it, maybe it doesn't get any better than that. Yeah, probably not. Because that drawing um, is, they did these crazy plan perspectives. Yeah. Right. Get any closer. Yeah. Where sometimes it was planned, sometimes it was elevation. So that's the one time I zoomed in on like a particular work, just as like a little nod to my own project. But, um, but yeah. So this is great. So this is my exhibition. Yeah. Basically, oh, great. Great. You know, you might be interested in. Uh, I'll show you what I was, because originally I was like, oh, maybe I'll do a, uh, I'll show you what I was actually thinking about doing. Yeah. That, and why it was not good. All right, design to you. So I was thinking about, So originally I was thinking about, okay, so I did this thing where I was thinking, oh yeah, see, it's like, enter on screen, enter now, mute myself. So this is actually, I made a 3D model of the exhibition space at Artscape Weston. Okay. Because originally I was thinking, oh, well, maybe what I'll do is I'll take those 2D drawings that I had and then put them up on the wall here and mm -hmm. then have people like, no, 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 it's like, so this is just a test. Like this is a, a piece that I put up as like a test and you can actually have people come in here and look at it. Mm -hmm. But whenever I show people, it was like, this was cool like 10 years ago. Like, <laughs> like, I don't know, like, <laughs> so, this is like my next step is trying to, because you, other people can enter into the space mm -hmm. and you can talk to each other and look at each other, but it's still clunky and it's still weird. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. It's still very clunky. It's not as smooth as your fly throughs, right? Yeah. And it's still, um, and like the, like, the, like, I don't know if you saw, but like, if you were to come in, like I can share it to you and you can come in, but like your avatar, <laughs> It's just like stupid looking. So you're just, <laughs> yes. So I spent a lot of time trying to figure out a way of being able to make the exhibition be like interactive, but short of like literally collaborating, I think with a video game designer, mm -hmm. I think it's like not good enough to be like, this is my work. So that was, um, Anyways, that stuff exists, but this was, it was like, that's like the next thing I'm thinking about. Yes. But here's one. So Caravans of Gold. Okay, so, wow. for, so for Caravans of Gold, I did like a, so for two of them, I did this more like an AXO mm -hmm. to kind of represent things, but in a way that you could still see it all in one moment. Right. And then conveniently, the Aga Khan actually, so this is the Matterport technology. Okay. Wow. So I didn't, like I was talking to the curator getting permission to do this and he was like, well, you know, we, we already did a 3D thing. I was like, <laughs> hell, like, you know, why didn't you even tell me? So in this oh, case, yes. okay. people are able to go through, right? Mm -hmm. But he, this is an example of, um, 
but this is predicated on the fact that the exhibition has been built, has been designed. Gotcha. They could take photography, they can get the, the angles that they wanted to build the space as opposed to starting from scratch and then putting things in. Yeah. I so, see the dilemma now. Yes. Yes. So from here, but like it, it's somebody, I mean, you can see it's actually interesting. Like they hired this company to come in and do it. Mm -hmm. And it's funny, where did I, if you look is here. A little glitch? Is there somebody that. <laughs> if you look here, you yeah, can okay. see the guy photographing it, right? Yes. So, I mean, I would love it if all of my clients like went and did that, or maybe I should hire people to do that for every exhibition, but yeah. Vanishing Beauty, I also did like an AXO drawing. Okay. I mean, the irony is that the 2D drawing uh, was created out of my 3D model. Right. So <laughs> I don't know whether that's funny. <laughs> so in this one, I'm trying to like show like the objects. Mm -hmm. And then, um, in this one, let's see, uh, group of seven. So this is a smaller one. I also did this at the Ottawa Art Gallery. I wonder if it's, unless it's big screen. I wonder if it's because so many people are at my website right now. <laughs> <laughs> there isn't but, enough bandwidth yeah yeah oh it's just like woohoo um so for example on this one what i was trying to kind of convey the fact that like in the 2d representation that that it was a, about creating this kind of more domestic space the concept behind this exhibition was that actually the works were a part of this personal family's collection in Ottawa called the Firestones and they donated a whole bunch of group of seven works to the Ottawa Art Gallery and so we were really inspired by their living room to okay. create the exhibition and so the brown is a representation of all this teak but we have like so for here I kind of use I've also been inspired by like a lot of my kid and so a lot of her younger books they always use this collage technique of like using fabric in the oh, image. Right, yes. <laughs> so this is like the curtains. This was like the screen that they had within. We included like a couch and uh, chairs. And uh, I, so this also was like, sorry, like a plan with a pers weird perspective with the works being showed in elevation. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. So. So yeah, I like it because it's a more um, user friendly way of looking at things as opposed to being very technical with like, this is the plan. These are the elevations. This is the perspective. It's like just we understand the what you're trying to get at. So putting it all together may, just makes sense. Right. Like it's not it's yeah. it's not supposed to be so precise. Like this is how it's supposed to feel. This is the way everything flows. And it, I feel it does, does such a good job. I mean, it's oh. so funny, like when I do um, critiques at design schools, it's like they're very precise, right? Like, here's my plan, here's my thing. And I'm like, but this could also, this is so effective. In one drawing, you have like three in one, right? Yeah. Yeah, I hope it um, connects well with my vision statement or whatever <laughs> about this one view to kind of get the, I mean, to be honest, when I was, this is also like a, an experiment for me, right? So mm -hmm. all of, so I basically have the two diff, the three different ways of doing these drawings. And I'm not sure which is like the best. Right. I don't know. Yeah. But it's been, uh, or even if best is like a term to be used like i tried to choose what was most appropriate for each mm -hmm. each one i think my favorite i think is probably this one mm. 
mostly because of the exhibition itself, I think. Um, the works were like just intense. Wow. Like these are all fabrics, these huge oh. like wall fabrics. Yeah. And they're like painted fabrics, but with, yeah, some of them were stitches and no way. Yeah. So, but, um, do you get to go and see the exhibitions that you oh, design? Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm usually, uh, yes, a hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, and like, actually, I'm. I think what I might do is like down here link because this is like. So this is my actual website. So like, for example. Oh okay. Here, yes. These are like the photographs of the real thing. Mm hmm. So. I should probably include a link to this. That's a good way to bring it all together. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So that's like the, um, yeah, here's Gates. I mean, also to be honest, I don't know whether, don't quote me on this, but like okay. I made the 3D like it was also a chance to uh, um, like kind of perfect it a little. Right. <laughs> like some things in real life don't quite turn out the way. Oh. This exhibition was at the same time as the, um, the first Architecture Biennale in Chicago. Okay. Mm. 2015 and there were, and the AIC at the same time had the David Adagi exhibition upstairs. But uh, yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Yes, okay. I will include, there's, this is the Kipper one. Yes. We do. Oh, yeah. So, so this is the one that's in the But I'm always amazed, to be honest, how similar the reality is from the 3D model. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, this is a 3D view. Right. And that's the real one. Yeah. <laughs> like, actually, this is, like, for me, walking into the final exhibition is like going someplace I've already been. Right. I always find that. Interesting. Yeah, I don't have them all up. Hmm. I have to update my website. This is <laughs> this is my exhibition. Well done. Well done, well done. Thank you. So I guess like so you were mentioning a little bit about what's next for the studio, but you know, can you tell us what's coming down your pipeline? Um, well, I'm working on two small projects with the Ottawa Art Gallery. Um, so that's something that's like immediate. And I think my next step is to really reach out about like what I showed you with that, like Mozilla hubs, like that, like mm -hmm. just trying to think about a good other step. So I'm going to do some research about like, for example, that Matterport technology, the one that was used for the caravans of gold, mm -hmm. whether you could actually upload a 3D model into it or whether it needs to be phot photography. Right. And then looking into, so I'm going to pursue like that next step of like, what happens if someone came to me and was like, listen, I want to design we want to design an exhibition, but we're not actually going to install it anywhere. It's just living digitally. Like right. how, how to do that. Oh, that's cool. Well, I mean, that's I'll show cool. you with design. Um, yeah, I had it on here. I'll show you what like the OCAD gallery is doing for their design TO one. And I'll see how do they Ignite gallery. Right, so um, is it this? Yes, tables, chairs, and other objects. 
Yes, you visit. Oh. Not up yet? No, it is. I'm just doing it. I'm. Oh, okay. This. Oh, maybe this is. I'm not really sure. Oh, they did something quite different. You know what? Let me go back to the original, sure. the past ones. Maybe. Right, this is what I want to do. Enter exhibition. That's fine. So, right? So it's a digital space. This isn't real. Yeah, okay. but it's replicating the real space. I see. Okay. But I guess I don't know whether this is more. I don't know if this is more interesting than what I've done. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, it's still, like, I feel like it still needs, I'm not sure. I think, I think that next, maybe that 3.0 is actually designing, designing the most ideal space for the arts you're not constrained by the existing it's like okay if i had these yeah. pieces how would i best represent it and then you can just create the world as opposed yeah. to fitting it in and i think that's probably where you're going to find really interesting spaces because then you you'd like it's the world is your oyster you can do whatever whatever yeah. comes to mind right well it it's funny Yes, totally. Because it's funny because when I was thinking in terms of like doing that space that I showed you that you could inhabit in the Artscape Weston, mm -hmm. I was like, why the hell would I have people come into this horrible hallway <laughs> when like I could do anything? So yeah. I was like, that is not a good idea. So yeah. You know, there's one, um, my friend sent me an exhibition that I thought was quite interesting. Um, that here it is that it feels like I need to get rid of things that has a lot of money behind it right so it's like like if you're going to, like it's like, okay, we're making it 3D, mm -hmm. like it's digital. I don't know. It's basically like having an interesting website. Cool. In mm -hmm. this case, I don't know. I'll send you the link. Okay, yeah, I'll go through it. But you're right, there's so many ways that you can now present art or present design, but it's just a new way of thinking. I mean, I think you're right, like the gamers are already in that world, but it's a matter of figuring out how you work with them or how they can start to help other practitioners translate that, right? Yeah. Yeah. I agree, I agree. So maybe that's actually, I think my 2.0 or whatever, 3.0, <laughs> Maybe this is 3.0 is like um, finding a video game designer mm -hmm. interested in talking to me and just seeing what. It's so true. Let me copy this link so I have it. And I guess the last thing I, I was going to ask was uh, what would be your words of wisdom for the next generation? No words of wisdom. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> but you know I mean to be honest though it's um like I love designing I love stories 
I also love collaborating. So I love what I do. Mm -hmm. And I think like design is so big that you can find something in there that you love because in a lot of ways, it's also, there's always more work than people can imagine involved in right. things. And it, so if you're going to be, you're gonna do it and be, aim to be good and aim to have, like there has to be some sort of like love in there, I think. That, that's, I don't know, that's what I kind of think. No, that's great, that's great, that's great. Yeah, I think that's, that's the end of my interview, Christine.